Are you an athlete or a parent of an athlete? Okay, listen up, I have a thought-provoking question for you. What if I told you that your athlete does not need more explosive drills, throwing training, sprints, plyos, and heavy lifting? They need to survive the training they're already doing. The hours and hours and hours of practices and games and time spent on the field that they already do. Okay, hopefully you are a little bit intrigued. What do RG3, Derek Rose, Michelle Wee, Greg Oden, Ken Griffey Jr., Anna Kornikova, Penny Hardaway, Mark Pryor, and Mario Lemieux have in common? Each one is a player that had incredibly high potential at the highest level and either A, had a career-ending injury that allowed no further play, or they fell fall short of their projected success due to constant injuries. On the other hand, what do Tom Brady, Serena Williams, Michael Jordan, Wayne Gretzky, Stefan Holm, Mia Hamm, Diana Taurasi, and Martin St. Louis have in common? The above have a staggeringly low rate of injuries, played long careers, and retained an incredibly high level of performance late into their careers where most people burn out and they've seen their best days. The individual accomplishments of that group could be a, a huge video all by itself. The point I'm trying to make is that longevity is king. Why is that so important? Well, because if I can't play, I can't get any better. I can't exercise the skill set needed to rise and excel at each level. If I'm rate limited by an elbow injury, I simply can't throw hard. I can't develop my swing. I can't reach. I can't shoot. I can't throw or pass with 100% effort. And if I can't do that, I can't improve as an athlete, no matter how high my potential is. And if this pattern starts as a teenager or someone in their early 20s, the hopes of reaching their full potential is basically zero. The more I play, the more opportunities I have to refine my skill set. The more I play injury free, the more adaptation I will undergo simply by playing my sport with intensity day after day, the more likely I will rise above my peers and be competitive at the next level. So back to your athlete. The ability for them to play healthy for a long period of time is the greatest path for them reaching their full athletic potential. The wonder kid in the league that gets hurt next season and eventually has to hang up the jersey will only be what could have been compared to your athlete that will continue to grow, rise, and excel in their place. Again, longevity is king. Okay, sounds simple enough, but how do we actually do that? Success leaves clues. Check out all these photos. These are foundational, inescapable, completely necessary positions within sport. They are so common and so prevalent that you have to go out of your way to find a sport that doesn't replicate them to some degree. But how often do athletes train like this? I'd say almost never. We fall in love with the college football paradigm and we do our back squats and our cleans and our bench press and often recklessly with shoddy technique at max effort to the cheering of all the other athletes around you. I cannot tell you how many 40 year olds I've worked with who have experienced a catastrophic injury in their youth played a part in ending their athletic career. It's honestly staggering how common this is. Contrarily, there is no movement more totally on point for athletic development than the seated good morning. This has the potential to develop a freaky athletic ability in this position, which is so ubiquitous in sports. It creates bulletproofing across the whole system. Yet most athletic training programs never touch this golden opportunity. In a nutshell, it exposes hip dysfunction. If I can't go any further, ugh, well, it allows for some pretty quick course correction so that I can find a level that I can work towards. And it has a very easy roadmap for success. As I succeed, level by level by level, eventually I find myself in a place where I have full hip function. It also scales up to produce gains in the freakiest of athletes, making this essentially the perfect movement for athletic development. What else can we do? Well, without making this video five hours long, here are six examples of tests that your athlete should be able to pass at a minimum to ensure they're avoiding injury. ATG split squat with 75% of body weight for five reps each side. Seated good morning with 75% body weight, belly to bench for 10 reps. 10 tib raises at 25% body weight. External rotations at 15% body weight for eight reps each side. Perform three dips at 50% body weight. Behind the neck press with 63% of body weight for five reps. The importance of these lie and their direct tie to athletic demands. These positions are foundationally necessary across a broad group of athletes and sport types. Each of these has a direct relationship to athletic success determined by the godfather of strength and conditioning, Charles Poliquin, 
refined in the modern era by Ben Patrick, the knees over toes guy, and trained through the ATG, so coaches like myself, a level two endorsed coach, can share this with athletes at the local level. Don't believe me? I'm 38 years old. I'm a decade past my prime. I've got two little kids at home, and I'm still easily performing at a high level. I've battle tested this stuff on myself with great success. I mean, seriously, who do you even know that can do all of these things? Imagine what we could do for your athlete to unlock their true athletic potential. If you wanna have your athlete rise to the next level, bulletproofing them for longevity is key to their success.